monsters only grow in the darkness of denial. And if we can turn on that flashlight and have the courage to look around every dark and gnarly corner that we hold, then we can shine light and let nothing take root and grow bigger in the light of our perspective. This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Polo Tate. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? Oh, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I am as excellent as can be. It's a great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? I am in the heart of New York City, and it is very gothamy outside. Oh, Rainy, dark, overcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just begun raining in uh, my Caribbean island, Trinidad and oh, Tobago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but I, I'm guessing it's not as cold, possibly. Is it cold there right now? <laughs> It's about low 60s Fahrenheit. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, I definitely. I'll trade you. Uh, I'm not trading. <laughs> I'm not trading. I don't blame you. Good choice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, do tell us, like, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? What a good question. I would probably say my book, it has just been published by Macmillan. It's called Deep Dark Blue. And it's a memoir of my survival of the Air Force Academy here in the United States. Hmm. So you wrote a book. Uh, by no means is that an easy task. Oh, my. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, now tell us a bit more about the book, please. Sure. It is a story. It's one person's story, but as I have found out with writing it and now getting it published, that I'm not alone, nor are any of us in our experience. It's my experience of uh, surviving sexual assault and betrayal and violence and all of the things that come with not only a college experience, but the added experience of being at one of the nation's highest bastions of learning, uh, the United States Air Force Academy. So the service academies are extremely rigorous and extremely tough and challenge you on uh, a myriad of levels, including physically, academically, and militarily. How did you overcome this? It took, at times, brute strength, uh, incredible perseverance, and I think a deep down knowing that in the end, the journey to get to know yourself wholly and love yourself unconditionally is the most important journey that will ever take in a lifetime. And to ultimately realize that no one can take your joy, whatever experiences that we've gone through and everybody has their story. So we've all faced adversity in some way, some, uh, some in a very physical, brutal way, some uh, incredibly mentally challenging, emotionally challenging. We're all human, right? So we've gone through the full spectrum of human emotion. And so often we don't let ourselves off the hook in going through that. We think we have to be happy all the time or perfect or when in actuality, being authentically you is actually the key to not only survival, but making an impact in this beautiful world. Is there someone that you learned that ability from, that ability to weather true storms? I think both of my mother and my father were really good at that in their own way. They have much different personalities compared to one another, but their own way of dealing with things. And the one thing that they agreed upon and, and instilled early on is that the belief that and the knowing, the deep knowing that we can do anything that we set our minds, our hearts, our spirits to do. And quite often that comes down to a fundamental outlook on life that that truly allows you to know that any progress that you do make, anytime we reach for a better thought, we are making progress. And it may seem like it's taking a lifetime. It may seem like it goes by in the blink of an eye. But if you keep reaching for that better feeling thought, if you keep knowing and believing that there is something better out there for you and that you deserve it, then we can survive anything and not only survive, but come to thrive. Mm -hmm. So I think the two of them really instilled that 
in both me and my sister when we were very young. Oh, you named the book, the memoir, Deep Dark Blue. Uh, is it still deep, dark and blue? Or is that a, a theme of life that you want to ensure that's communicated? Or has it changed? I think everybody goes through their deep, dark abyss at some point in their life. For me, I'm so happy to say that it is no longer deep, dark blue, but rather a bright, beautiful you. Um, I am so happy and fortunate and blessed feeling every day that when and if I go down the emotional rabbit hole, it is never to rock bottom and it's never as dark of a journey or as isolated a solitary confinement as it had been before. So it is possible to climb the depths and, uh, and to understand that we don't ever have to feel that dark and lonely ever again. Hmm. Love it. All right. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. <laughs> I do three things every day without fail. So if I can break your rule of one. Sure. Uh, the first thing is meditation every day. Uh, for me, it's 20 minutes twice a day. But even if somebody can get five minutes in of just solitude and silence to listen to their inner self, uh, imperative. Um I also ask myself into alignment every day, which means I put my hand over my heart and ask myself out loud, how do I feel and answer myself out loud? I feel whatever that may be and keep going until I finally get to the root cause of how I feel. And it, and it absolutely makes the biggest difference emotionally for me to set my day in motion. And then the third thing is exercise. For me, I, I grew up an athlete. I'm a very physical person. And it's so helpful to integrate my mind and body before I do anything else. It's like coffee to me. <laughs> so just to someone that's listening, why they should at least choose one of these three. Oh my gosh. If not the three. I, I think it's so important if we want to experience life fully, to fully integrate all of the beautiful gifts that we're given when we on this earthly realm. So integrate your body, integrate your mind, integrate your inner soul and voice. And in order to do that, you need to be able to work together, right? Monsters only grow in the darkness of denial. And if we can turn on that flashlight and have the courage to look inside ourselves and look around every dark and gnarly corner that we hold inside our mind, our memory, our life experience, then we can shine light and, and let nothing take root and grow bigger in the light of our perspective. Love that. Amazing audience. Again, you're hearing it live from Polo. Rio Tate. Uh, you can connect with her at polotate.com. Is there any other place you'll point us to to connect with you? Sure. I'm Popo Rio on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter, Polo Tate. Uh, the best place is through my website, polotate.com. You nailed it. All right. Well, let's switch gears for a moment. Now let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Polo, what's your earliest childhood memory? I have incredibly early memories of throwing a ball at like 18 months, riding a bike at two and a half. My sister was my best friend and my ultimate teacher. And so she was three years older than I, so was already here when I came tumbling into the world. <laughs> so I have a ton of memories. Yeah, why do you think that ball throwing is so clear? I think it was completely indicative of, I think we all have very distinct personalities and things that we are attracted to when we come into this world. And I think it was perfectly indicative of mine. Um, mm. <laughs> throwing a ball, being athletic helps my brain work better. And I, I was an NCAA college volleyball player, division one. I was recruited for volleyball, basketball, and soccer. So sports and athleticism has always been a part of me. And it's, and it's always just such a beautiful reminder that we didn't come into this world to be talking heads. We're fully integrated mind, body, spiritual beings. And it's such a gift. Definitely. All right. Well, if we fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? 
I would say probably Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. All right. All Why right. not as a 12 year old? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, just the words Let's Get It On is pretty cool that uh, in terms of your activities, yeah, in terms of being that uh, athletic person, it, it really is a type of attitude you have to have, though, right? Like, come on, let's get this on. Yeah, like, like it's important, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I can't tell you how many uh, basketball games I had "Bring It On" written on my wrist wow. in marker. You know, <laughs> again those three words, so, right? Bring it. I on. know. Oh my god. Um, interesting. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Lightning round. Bring it on. Polo, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? No. Do you have children? Not yet. Do you believe in God? <laughs> I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. Uh, what about three hours a week? Tennis channel on <laughs> mute. <laughs> what about screen time? <laughs> the food or and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Well, I write. So when I'm writing, it can be 24 hours a day. Wow. All right. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Polo Tate, what would you say that is? Oh, I'd say that's no one can take your joy, bar none. Love it. Polo, hey, this has been such of a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. You are bringing such light and love into the world and you're letting people know that they're not alone and that they're surrounded by love and that we all have a superpower. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Again, Paula, this has been such a great pleasure. Thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you. You're welcome. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.